Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Insha'Allah today we're going to talk about one of the beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the name is Al-Aziz. Most of the translation translate that word to the word Almighty. But in reality, that word has multiple meanings, a lot of meanings. And the first meaning when you read Al-Aziz, it means the one who has no peer or equal, unique, and everything depends on him. So he is the source of all creation, and all creation to survive needs him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained that definition in the Quran in Surah Al-Ikhlas. Allah said, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدٌ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفْوًا أَحَدٌ Say, He Allah is one. Allah is He on whom all depends. He begets not, nor is He begotten. Means, He did not give birth, nor He was bo born. And none is like Him. So that's the first meaning. Unique. Nothing like Him. And everything depends on him. That's Al-Aziz, the first meaning. The second meaning of Al-Aziz is the one who is always victorious and he's never defeated. Nothing can pre prevent him from fulfilling what he wants. Nothing. Whatever he decides, there is nothing that can stop him. No human being can do that. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says in the Quran, وَاللَّهُ غَالِبٌ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ And Allah is the winner in all His commands, in all His affairs. But most people do not know. A lot of people think, oh, I can do whatever I want. Nothing can stop me. You hear that a lot of time. People say, nothing can stop me. But Allah, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Aziz, who can do whatever he wants because he's always victorious. He can do whatever he wants. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, In يَنْصُرْكُمُ اللَّهَ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ If Allah helps you, if Allah gives you victory, none can overcome you. Because nothing can defeat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah gives you victory, nothing can defeat you. That's it. Nothing can stop in your way. If Allah is going to support you. And you can see that in Surah al rum the chapter of the Roman. In that chapter, the Muslims at that time were weak. And there was a battle that happened between the Persian and the Romans. And the Persian won. And it's not just won, they crushed the Romans. Crushed them, humiliating defeat and took a lot of their land. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses. In those verses, Allah is saying that the Roman will win. And he gave a specific time. He said, Fi bid'a sinin. Bid'a in Arabic means between three and nine years. So most of the people who he hear those verses, most of them are gonna be alive in three to nine years. So any human being cannot say those verses because there is no way. The Romans have been crushed. How can they win again? And specifically, if I'm a human being, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say the Roman will win. Maybe after we all die. Maybe in a thousand years. Who knows? I'm not going to be around. But Allah was specific because Allah is Al-Aziz. When he said they're going to win, means they're going to win. It's not maybe if it's when or how, it's going to happen. And it did happen. And all the people who did not believe in Islam, they saw it happening. And the third meaning of Al-Aziz means the one who reinforces and makes stronger to make you victorious. Add you, give you strength. Give you reinforcement so you can be a winner. That's Al-Aziz. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a town in the old days before Islam. He's saying, 
إذ أرسلنا إليه مثنين فكذبوهما فعززنا بثالث فقالوا إنا إليكم مرسلون When we sent to them two, two prophets, they sent to that town, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent two prophets. Then rejected both of them, they refused to believe them. Then we strengthened them with a third. Allah sent reinforcement, a third prophet to the same town. So they said, surely we are messengers to you. So Allah sent reinforcement. But most of the people including me, we don't have a clue what are the reinforcement of Allah. The reinforcement of Allah can be things we cannot imagine. Because Allah, every creation that Allah created is a soldier of Allah, obeys Allah. And Allah can direct them to help and to give you victory. The beautiful example in the battle of Badr, the Muslim were fighting the non-believer. If you look at the war, Muslim were 300 people. The non-believer were a thousand. Muslim had two horses. The non-believer had 300 horses and 700 camels. Horses and camels at those times is like tanks. When you have horses and camels, you have a lot of weapons. And the Muslim are going to be fighting them. Look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sent His reinforcement to the Muslim. Four soldiers, Allah sent them. The first one, Allah sent sleep. Sleep. The Muslim were so nervous, they were so worried, they couldn't sleep. They were so tired and, and worried about they're going to be killed. So Allah made them sleep. So they gained their strength, they replenished their, their energy, sleep, everyone fell asleep till the morning. The second soldier that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent is vision. He sent a vision to the Muslim that the non-believer are much less than they are. To the point that one of the great companions, his name Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, when they were standing in front of the non-believer getting ready to fight, he told the guy next to him, he said, I think there are 70. The other guy said, no, 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 there are a hundred. And there are a thousand. So he, gave, he raised their spirit, gave them more courage. Oh, we're 300 and there are 100. We're going to crush them. A vision. The third soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent rain. The rain he sent it to the Muslim was light rain. So what it did... The ground under them became firm, so they can stand on it. And for the non-believer, the rain came hard, so it became muddy. When the camels and horses were traveling to get to the battlefield, they became exhausted. They became weak, so they can fight them. And then the rain in the morning, the Muslim, when they woke up, it's exactly when we wake up in the morning, we wash our face so we're fresh and ready and full of energy, a soldier of Al-Aziz. And then the fourth soldier of Al-Aziz, he sent the angels. A thousand angels came down to help the Muslim. And the Prophet ﷺ told them, here is Jibreel, he's on his horse, and he has his sword and he's fighting with us. So the spirit of the Muslim was lifted. All of those are reinforcement. And it's not only the reinforcement come because of the Prophet was there. Any one of you, if you obey Allah and trust Him, He's going to send you reinforcement. You wouldn't know what they are, but He will send you reinforcement. He will support you. He will give you victory. And the fourth meaning of Al-Aziz is the one who is the source of power and honor and grants them to whoever He wishes. He grants them to his servants and he refused that any of his servants that obeys him be humiliated. That's Al-Aziz. He, he gives you the strength, he gives you the dignity, the honor, so you will never be humiliated in this life. And Allah is saying in the Quran, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِمَّنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ Say, O oh Allah, 
possessor of the kingdom, possessor of power. You give the kingdom to whom you will, and you take the kingdom from whom you will. And you raise whom you will, and you humiliate whom you will. It's all in the hand of Allah. The one that He raised, the one that He gives the kingdom, is the people who obey Him, who trust Him. He gives that, Al-Aziz, and He takes it away from the people who don't obey, who don't trust Him. And if you look at the name Al-Aziz, is mentioned in the Qur'an almost 95 times in the Qur'an. Most of the time it's associated with another name. There is another name with it. The most two common names that have been mentioned with Al-Aziz, the first one, 47 times Al-Aziz was mentioned with Al-Hakim, the wise. Because Allah is saying, it's not just power, but there is wisdom in Allah, how He used His power. Everything that He does, there is wisdom behind it. If He gives strength to a person, if He gives power to a person, there is wisdom behind it. If He takes it away, there is wisdom. And 14 times, Al-Aziz was mentioned with Ar-Rahim. So it's not sometimes you see people who have power and they abuse the power. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His power comes with mercy. So always, when He uses His power, He's merciful with His people. Whether you're a believer or not believer, He's merciful. And that's why, if He's not merciful, just imagine when we disobey Allah. We could have a, a lightning come and strike us immediately and die. But Allah is merciful. He's Al-Aziz, but He's Al-Rahim. So He's merciful. So what if we are servant of Al-Aziz? We're all servant of Al-Aziz. So what should we do? How we can honor the name Al-Aziz as Muslim? The first thing that we should do is we should never accept humiliation. Never. A Muslim that truly believes in Al-Aziz will never humiliate himself to anybody. No other human being, no matter what it is. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعِزَّةَ فَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ جَمِيعًا Whoever desire, desire might, power, honor, glory, that's al-izza. Then to Allah belong the might altogether. So it's all in the hand of Allah. So why are you humiliating yourself to another human being if he cannot control it? He can't. You humiliate yourself to somebody hoping that he's going to give you a job, hoping that he's going to give you a business or whatever. It's not in his hand. It's all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't humiliate yourself to any human being. But by the same token, I don't mean being rude to people because that's not Islam. But I'm saying be having self-dignity. Have self-respect. Don't humiliate yourself to anybody, no matter what it is. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Seek things with dignity, with self-respect. For all matters are run by divine decree, by qadr. Everything in life is in the hand of Allah. So no matter what you do, you humiliate yourself, you don't humiliate yourself, the results are the same. So it's up to you. What do you want? You want to have your dignity, your respect? Don't you think if you humiliate yourself that your boss is going to keep you and not let you go or the other way? Don't. It's all in the hand of the Allah. Do things. Do everything you can in your power, but with dignity, with self-respect. The second thing is help Muslims and Islam gain might, gain izzah. The Prophet ﷺ says, Whoever can help a Muslim gain might and does not do it, Allah will humiliate him on the day of judgment. If you can help a Muslim to keep his dignity, to keep his self-respect, and you don't do it, you're going to be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So help your fellow Muslim, whatever you can. If you see a Muslim in trouble, or in need or whatever and you can relief 
the difficulty from your brother Muslim, do it. So Allah will relieve you from your difficulty in this life and the hereafter. The third thing is humble yourself only before Allah. What does humble mean? Humble means obey Him. Because when you're arrogant in front of Allah, that means you're saying, I know better. I'm not going to do what Allah is saying. But when you humble yourself, you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever Allah told you don't do, don't do it. And whatever Allah asks you to do, do it. Humble yourself in front of Allah. Obey Him. And the Prophet والسلام, he said, And no one has humbled himself for the sake of Allah. But Allah has elevated him. He gave him Azza. He raised him. So when you obey Allah, this is the formula. You want to have power? You want to have respect? You want to have people looking up to you? Obey Allah. Allah is going to give you that. He's going to elevate you. That's guaranteed. So do it. And the Prophet ﷺ in another hadith, he said, Whoever seeks to achieve something by committing a sinful deed is too far from that which he desires and too near to that which he fears. What he's saying, if for sake of discussion you're worried about your financial condition, you don't have enough money or whatever, so you start to say to yourself, shaitan starts to tell you, you know, if you steal, you're going to have enough money and you're going to be financially secure. The Prophet is telling us, if you do that, you're going to be far away from what you're do looking for. You're looking for financial security, you're not going to have it. Definitely you're not going to have it. You're going to be far away from it. So the only way to achieve every goal in life is to obey Al-Aziz. Obey him. And that's how you get it. A beautiful example Allah is giving us in the Quran in the story of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. When you read the story of Sayyidina Yusuf, Sayyidina Yusuf was a slave and he was taken as a slave working for Al-Aziz which is the secretary of treasury. And at the time, in those times, he was the second most powerful in the country. The only one that was more, more powerful was the Pharaoh. So he's number two, Al-Aziz. And Sayyidina Yusuf, a slave, the wife of Al-Aziz, beautiful woman, powerful, fame, everything. She wanted to have haram relationship with him, commit adultery. But look at Sayyidina Yusuf, he said no. He refused to do that. Which one is a slave and which one is a master when you look at it? The woman humiliated herself. Yusuf السلام, was raised by Allah. He has dignity, self-respect. And look at her husband, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Treasury. When they, they, they were investigating that whole situation, they brought a judge from her family. And the judge investigated and confirmed that his wife is the one that want to commit adultery with Sayyidina Yusuf, not the other way. And look at Al-Aziz, the, the, the second most powerful man. What did he do? He looked at Sayyidina Yusuf and asked him, cover it up. Don't mention it to anybody. He's worried about his position. He's worried about his image. That's all he cared about. Which one is humiliated and which one has dignity? Al-Aziz, the second most powerful man, humiliated. Everybody knows the story. And he's just saying, cover it up. And Sayyidina Yusuf, respect, dignity. And then things turn around. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he obeyed Allah. Then Allah raised him and makes Sayyidina Yusuf the secretary of the treasury. The second most powerful man in the country. By obeying Allah. And that's what each one of us can have. Obeying Allah, He can raise us. And there is no limit to where He can raise us to. I'll tell you a story, because this is maybe you're going to say it's a prophet. A recent story that happened in a Muslim country. A young man, he opened a small store, a bookstore. 
selling books and stuff like that. And then a woman liked him, young, nice looking. She started to come to his store frequently and trying to seduce him, to tempt him. Until finally one day, the shaitan pushed him and he was ready. So she told him she's going to go home and he followed her just after a while. The young man closed his store and was going home, uh, going, going to her home. On his way, he started to think, I just last year did Hajj and I stood in front of Allah and asked him to help me and he helped me and I opened that little store and that's how I'm going to repay Allah, do haram. So he turned around, went to his home, went home, prayed to Allah, asked for forgiveness, asked repenting, asking Allah to help him not to commit anything that, to disobey Allah. The next day, a person in the street, one of the big business people in the street came to him and he said, I've been watching you and I like you. Are you married? He said, no. He said, I have a daughter and I think she will be a good wife for you. Why don't you send your mother to come and see her? The young man is saying, when I heard that, I said, uh oh, there is a problem. I'm sure that the daughter is either ugly looking or some has, has bad temper or bad manners. Because why he's asking me? But he sent his mother. His mother came back and she said, she is beautiful and she has a beautiful sense of humor and she is lovely and enjoyable to sit with her. They married. After a few months, the father is watching as he's treating his daughter and all of that. Then he told him, you know, I want you to be my partner. I want you to leave, shut down your business and come. We're going to be equal partner in my business. And he went and joined the father and they became equal partner. And shortly the father died and he became the one running the whole business. Until today, he's one of the biggest businessmen in this town. All he did is obey Allah. And we can all of us, if we obey Al-Aziz, we can have everything you want, not only in this life, but in the hereafter, insha'Allah. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين استغفروه إنه غفور رحيم